that topic, I want to emphasize the two values you're going to have when you build such an application are the underlying documents, and there, there has been really great work by the right documentation team, um, okay. including Angelina and others. Um, and then the other one is like users and, and questions from users. So like if you have these two things, then that makes it much easier to build this kind of application. Yeah. Actually, I just want to quick, see a quick show of hands. How many folks internally or I guess externally have started building Rags-based applications at work? Okay. Well, that's a lot of you. Okay. So I'd love to hear like everyone else's insights tonight as well. Um, the things that we will share are very empirically driven. So if you find you found a different insight, for example, like the chunking size that we'll talk about, please definitely share those kinds of things because we're very early uh, as a kind of a community in this space. So it, it'd be great to hear kind of different people's take on all this. Um, so obviously kind of starting simple, we started our whole application with just seeing how will a base LLM do? We tried it with GPT-4, Llama 7B, 70B, and we would just ask a question and very quickly, you know, we'd realize that these models have no context or very little context of how things work. And if they did, it'll be outdated, right? Uh, September 21 sometimes, and Ray looked, uh, I think, very different back then, uh, if it even had access to it. Um, so we very quickly got to actually building the RAG app. This is kind of like the high level overview here, um, but this is the forward pass once you have a query. So assume the vector database is already made. We'll talk about what that looks like in a second. But somebody asks a question, the query gets embedded by an embedding model. You have a couple options there. Then that gets passed into a vector database. And now you can have a couple different options for how you calculate distance. But that embedded query is now used to fetch the top K context. You have options for how many top Ks as well. Uh, once you get those contexts, you can now feed in both the text from those contexts and the text from the query, both into the LLM. So now you've augmented the base LLM with this additional context to be able to hopefully generate uh, a correct response. The actual uh, vector database piece here, um, simplifying, we'll zoom into each of these, but basically we have a bunch of data sources, so we started with our Ray documentation, um, and then we wanted to be able to load them, so this is very similar to what we did this morning. Um, and this was the first kind of step where we started to get uh, a little experimental, the actual like chunking, right? How do we want to represent our data? Um, and Maybe I'll let Philip talk about the different strategies we tried, but the thing, the naive thing that everyone does is just randomly chunk this, right? I wanna just set chunk size 100 or 300, chunk overlap 50, and just go through all of my different documents. But that, that starts to uh, not be as effective. Uh, so we started thinking about a lot of other ways to more uh, efficiently chunk the data. So one thing we um, did then was um, to use the sections of the HTML document. Um, I would say there's two benefits of that. One is that you can give, you also want to give the refer, uh, in some applications you want to give the references on where you got the information from. And then you can give a lot more precise references instead of, instead of people, uh, pointing people to the whole like long document, you can just um, um, point them to the reference and then when they click the link, it will, the browser will like go to the right section. And that's very valuable. And then the second one is um, the sections often give the right sort of like first idea of like where something ends. So like um, it makes sure that there's no like um, um, chunking in between sections. <coughs> Sorry. Um, a lot of different.